Okay, what's up and welcome back to the channel. This is the Program Geek and in today's video we need to continue with the part 13 or tutorial 13 of the Procon Tutorials for Absolute Beginners Beginner series. So without wasting too much time, let's get right into the video. Okay, so first things first, if this is your first time coming to the channel, please click the subscribe button. Also remember to click the notification so that you get an update whenever I upload a new video and also remember to like the video and also leave a comment in the comment section below. And once you are done, let's just dive right into the content of the video. Okay, so by now you probably know that I'm now using Procon 3.1, license provided by the Procon Software Consultant. So yes, we have upgraded and our tutorials are no longer in demo. They all, let me just say they are no longer going to be in demo. As you can see, we are fully activated. So yes, in the previous uh, sections from tutorial 1 to tutorial 12, we were using program 3.0 in demo. But don't worry, what we're going to be doing is I told you most of the functionality is still the same. Nothing changes as much as. But now the beauty is we can now use bigger loads and also explore more features or functionality when we have this module now because we're using program 3.1 which is fully activated unfortunately for the sumo we might take a little bit of time because it requires a more complicated let me just say more powerful machine mine is not but uh i'm now rambling along but i just wanted to update you on that now we're going to be using Procon 3.1 and the license has been provided by Procon. now let's see what we actually wanted to talk about in tutorial 13. so in tutorial 13 what we need to do is in the previous one we were looking at the base design module and yes, uh, we were going to talk about you designing strap beams and everything, but we're still doing a beginner series, so we need to focus on the beginner's beginning. Or let me just say the basic things. So in today's video, we need to just kickstart on the concrete column design modules. So uh, this is going to be an introduction. We have three in total, the rectangular, the circular, and the general column design module. But in this particular, we're going to look just at an overview of all these modules, and then we, but we're also going to start looking at them one by one beginning with the rectangular column design module which i already have open here and i think we can also use it or just leave it open because this is what's going to help us as we start looking at the overview and also the theory that is going to be covered so as you already know me by now i prefer to make sure that you understand the software way before you start using it because it doesn't make sense for you to be inputting things into the software and then it gives you wrong answers and you think you've done something but you're actually doing very very bad design so what i just wanted to say is the first thing is as an overview right we have opened the rectangular column design but we need to understand the theory behind this so first things first one thing you just need to understand is that all the column design modules are able to design columns that are easy, that are either actually loaded or have an actual load or plus a unique actual bending moment or they have actual plus by actual moments that is the reason why you have the P, MX, MY, MX, and MY at the bottom and the top. So remember, you can design any column that is either actually loaded, actually plus uniquely loaded, or it can be actually plus by actually loaded, right? So that is the first thing that you need to understand. Then as we dive into the other theory, one thing that you need to understand is that Procon dwells on three rules, right? So these three rules are what it does when it's designing. So rule number one is it only considers anything to be a column when the larger to smaller dimension ratio is 1 is to 4. So what it just means is your larger dimension in this case edge has to be a maximum of 4 times longer than the smaller side. So for example if you're designing a 100 millimeter by 400 millimeter column right let's just say the smallest dimension in this case let's just put this at 100 right. So the maximum that we can go is 400 right. But in a case where we start saying 500, as you see in one of the errors, it's telling us H must be smaller than 4 times B. So in other words, if your smallest dimension is going to be 100, the maximum your H can be is going to be 4. So that is rule number 1. So you cannot, as long as your column is in a 4 to 1 ratio, it is considered a column. Once it goes past that, it is no longer considered a column. It is going to be considered something else. So in this case, obviously, your half of B, whatever is telling us, uh, that is because we had changed everything there are no errors there so the other thing that we now need to look at let's look at um rule number two rule number two says 
the design procedure for the rectangular columns is going to be the same design procedure that is used as well when you start using the circular column design module but it is going to be different when you use the general column design module and we are going to see that root procedure when we look at that module in particular but just remember when you're designing for the rectangular columns it's going to be the same as when you're designing circular columns i just mean that the procedure the theory behind the design and everything is just going to be the same then the last rule that you need to acquaint yourself with rule number three is that the reinforcement layout is assumed to be symmetrical so you may know if we just go to the right of the screen right there where you have a representation what they're just trying to say is that the bars that you have at the top of the x-axis and the bottom of the x-axis will be symmetrical same applies to the left of the y-axis and at the right of the y-axis so in this case as you can see you have three bars to the top and three bars at the bottom of the axis and as you look remember the bars at the axis are going to be redundant they're just going to be part of the mirror line but they're not considered but as you see when you go when you reflect about the y-axis you have two bars there and you have two bars there so this is what it just means that everything is going to be assumed to be symmetrical because sometimes you can design asymmetrical sections particular tests does this but that's a different software if you want you can just jump on youtube there are many videos on that also when you're doing manual calculations you can design asymmetrical columns but procon always assumes your column is going to be symmetrical so it will always have the same number of bars at either end of the mirror lines or should i say of the section line so that is the rule number three that you need to acquaint yourself and those are the top three rules that you need to look now after that we've covered we've looked at the design scope and we've looked at the theory the other thing that you need to understand is the codes of practice so just remember to get your codes of practice just do as i did on the screen just go to the button where you have the column and as you can see in this case it doesn't have code it just says design code so remember you can always jump to this part this is where you select the code that you want to but just remember with each code some of the factors may increase that you need to input some factors may be removed because each code just is every design is dependent on the code if some factors are included in a certain code some factors may not be included in a certain code so it does to conform to that so procon is smart whatever code you choose it will do that for you in this case maybe let's just say as you've seen we have selected the new zealand code i know the new zealand code has extra factors that you need to produce which are different from the bs so you will have to design according to the new zealand code but we stick to the bs so as you see that table is no longer there so the code will be also influenced the factors that you need to input so and remember there are so many design codes you can choose the one that you want after looking at the codes of practice the next thing that you need to understand is the units of measurement when it comes to these things this is the same whether it's general column rectangular column or even the circular column when it comes to the units you're going to have both the imperial and the metric but remember from a british colony we just use the metric and just remember anything that's not united states if you're not in the states you're going to be using metric most of the time just because it's si units right now that we've looked at the units of measurement the next thing that i would want to cover is just braced versus unbraced because if you look at the way you have the parameters that are going to be for each plane whether it's in the x and the y one thing that you just need to understand is i have explained braced and unbraced columns in my house to design a double story building series i designed that in depth i think the link to the playlist is in the description below i'm forgetting which video exactly but just go through the entire playlist you will be able to understand the videos as well and one thing you just want to know is that a column is considered braced in any plane if lateral stability to the structure as a whole is provided in that plane so if it's braced in the x it needs to have lateral stability in the x as well so most of this becomes important when you have four four stories five stories or more just like wind loading becomes more pronounced when you have more stories but the, as a rule of thumb always consider always enter your columns as unbraced just make sure that the unbraced is where you get the worst case scenario and also just remember because if you're not sure if a building is braced if you don't understand bracing just leave it but basically bracing is usually provided by shear walls x frames or tie beams so if you don't understand the concept of all these things and also the global stability or lateral stability just leave it as unbraced right it will give you the worst case scenario and as a beginner that's the best thing that you want to do so unless you don't know if you don't know go and ask your supervisor or even come to me with the layout but then remember i'll be charging you man so next time next time man next time anyways let's continue with what we're saying the next thing that you need to understand is the end conditions at the top and at the bottom 
so i have a video on end conditions because you know this one i just wanted to explain them more fully so that it can be illustrated so there's a video in the description link in the description below go and check that out i uploaded it earlier so check that video it will it will tell you a lot about end conditions what's the difference between when it's fully fixed partially fixed pinned and free because this one's needed illustration and because the important thing about these things is because they influence the effective length factor so the moment you change maybe from pinned as you see it's pinned and fully fixed let me just change it again um as you can see the factor becomes different right so as you will see when it's a pinned column you cannot it, it tells you the errors some of the so in other words you need to understand the difference between end conditions because when an end is fixed, right, then you, when, when you have a pinned moment, then when you have a pinned end, you don't expect any moments to be going there. So you can't exit any moments there, right? And I've talked about, I also have a video about where do moments and columns come from. So look at that video so that you best understand what the whole setup of your building when it comes to that. But you'll find that most buildings are partially and fully fixed, right? Especially when you're starting to design, what do you call this? framed buildings when you design framed buildings it's mostly just fully and partially fixed then also remember the effective length factor is going to be self-calculated by the software so you don't even have to worry about then the last thing that i just want to talk about is as you go on for the examples you see where it says short column uh short column with usually based or by braced standard column and everything uh the other thing you just want to understand is that this takes in this module rather takes into account the slenderness and shortness of a column so just remember it all it's all have to do with the lateral deflection so when you can ignore lateral deflection or the effects of lateral deflection can be ignored that column is considered to be short and when they cannot be ignored that column is considered to be slender and just to take it or we'll give it an example someone who's short and bulky is hard to topple is someone who's tall and lanky so tall and lanky that's your slender columns you understand what's slender. And short and bulky that's a short column so deflection may not have really because your center of gravity is like really low same applies to the columns as well the center of gravity will be low so it's one of the same things so that is the theory that you need to understand when it comes to the column design module so what we're going to do is we're going to wrap the video keep it short so that it's easy to edit and also that it's concise and everything but i just wanted to make sure that you understand the theory that goes on before we start inputting and then we look at the design and the calc sheets and then at the banding schedule at the very end so in this case what i'll do is i think this one is easy to have explained most of the theory so we just be keen in or just use this uh what i'll do is in the next video i'll just explain in brief the geometry input and also how to input your loads then we need to look at the design so that we understand what each of these things on the screen will be saying to us so without wasting too much time we're going to wrap the video here i'll see you in the next tutorial which is going to be tutorial part 14 because this is 18 so yes we're now using program 3.1 uh shout out to program software consultants for that and without wasting too much time, let's wrap the video, stay safe and don't sneeze, and I'll see you next time.